when you touch up on a surface, electrical, very, very, very weak electrical signals are generated from that skin surface, and then they travel up to your spinal cord, up to your brain stem, and up to the opposite part of your head the piece of your brain that when the signal reaches that part that is when you feel like you're touching something so if that signal never reaches that part of the brain then you feel like you're completely numb in a world that has become practically digitalized we humans lack a necessity that has connected our species since we first came to be whether it was when we first picked up a rock and carved a picture of a buffalo in a cave or found that holding our babies made us feel emotional and attached. Whether through violent and vengeful physical acts of murder, or playful sporting and martial arts contact. Physical touch has always played a role throughout different cultures and contexts. However, because of quarantine and our new virtual world, it seems that our physical connection to one another has dissipated within just a few years. But to really understand what happened, we need to know what physical touch really means in our new modern world. Physical touch has been the thread that has weaved us together as a species. A constant reminder that we're not alone. So what do we do when that thread all of a sudden stops? I know when I hear a noise. I know when I see something strange. I know when I smell something different. Like, I, I, I can immediately identify that, but we're always touching something. Just the definition of physical is um, perception through the senses mm -hmm. and as opposed to through your mind. What are the ways that are normalized in which bodies touch other bodies? Handshakes, a hug, hello or goodbye, or something happened in a community. So there's kind of an assumption on more hugging. This table, this chair, my head, it's something we don't think about because it's always happening. Here in America, our greetings and building blocks of relationships include hugging, handshakes, and high fives. However, that's just in our country. Greetings can take many different physical forms around the world. In France, people kiss on the cheek. Kind of like if someone were to give a hug here. In Japan, bowing is a respectful greeting instead of something like a handshake. In India, you might notice that touching someone's feet is often seen as a sign of respect. You see, physical touch isn't seen as one thing. Ultimately, the importance of physical touch in any given culture or society is shaped by many different factors. This can include cultural norms, religious beliefs, or historical traditions. Physical touch is such a different thing for so many different people. I, I think that it's a, it's a personal choice. I'm a relatively social person, but I also like my, my physical um, autonomy. Two people that I go to school with that I know, one person goes around hugging people she's known for about two hours. Mm -hmm. And I know another guy who it took him years to be comfortable with a fist bump and a handshake. I enjoyed not having to shake hands with people during COVID, and yeah. I enjoyed not having to hug people yeah. greetings. <laughs> For me, physical touch feels like something special and unique that like, you get to choose to share with someone. Uh, I'm Colton, I go to Mill River, uh, some hobbies, I'm in you know band, I'm in chorus. I spend a lot of time playing a catch-up game of you know catching up from where I, what I should have already knew to where I should be now. I mean, uh, as a kid, you know, I was in a fairly, I guess, isolated sort of environment. I, you know, didn't go to a school and I didn't have many friends, so physical touch wasn't a very prevalent thing for me, uh, and I had to, and I had to get used to it. So for me, it was more of a challenge to overcome than something I always. New. I currently teach health education here at Middlebury Union High School. With consensual physical touch, um, I even fall to that automatic thought of 
it's of a sexual nature, yeah. but really it's it's not. Every morning, my brother and I, when we were leaving for school, we'd stand at the door and my dad would do his, he called his his father's blessing and he'd take his hands and just, we'd be standing facing towards the door with like our backpacks on and he'd stand behind us and just put his hands on the top of our heads. Some, like if we were both leaving at the same time, he'd have like one hand on either of our heads and just say like kind of a blessing for us. And like I can still, like just saying that out loud, I can feel kind of the, even though like his hand isn't on my head right now, but I can kind of feel that body sensation of like heat and like um, just like real, real positivity. When you have less and less touch, what you feel is that you're less and less connected to the outside world. And when we start to lose connection with the outside world, that is when we really experience the sense of isolation. And that has been shown to be bad for our health. People who really experience isolation and, and loneliness, negative loneliness, have been shown to be prone um, to, to, to bad health to the extent, to the same extent as someone who smokes um, like 40 cigarettes a day or someone who is severely overweight. It's a startling statistic, I guess. Uh, it kind of catches you off guard. Um. So yeah, we're already leading into, okay, there's some normal ways bodies touch each other. Um, and then now we're kind of leading into there's an emotional assumption of a need. No, in order to get blood flow to people, in order to get uh, people to be comfortable with you, you have to have that touch, you have to have feeling, you have to have, you have to be able to feel someone else in your hands and they have to be able to feel your hands on them. That's definitely, that's something that like kind of evens me out and like you do need some sort of like comfort like that in your life. You know, people talk about you can sit, people sit in front of a piano and they can just play, right? People can do math equations just because they can. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing here. Someone comes in with something no one else can figure out. They've been doctors and they've been to chiropractors and they've been to, you know, everyone. They've had x-rays and MRIs and, and CAT scans and no one can figure out what's wrong with them. It'll literally take me 10 minutes to figure it out. I went with a friend to pick up his brother and uh, he was a physical therapist and we ended up walking into his clinic and it was exactly like this. Kind of open concept, really a lot of athletic stuff around and, and I, the second I walked into that place I said, this is what I want to do for a job. This is what I want. So when I first got out of school, I was working in Boston and uh, I had this woman come in and she was the, uh, the president of the Reiki Association mm -hmm. in Boston, which is this huge huge thing for Reiki, and you know what yeah. Reiki is, it's yeah. kind of like a, it's kind of like an offbeat kind of mm -hmm. healing process. Um, and this lady was really high up in it, and I was treating her for her shoulder, and uh, I had her on the table, and then you do a range of motion, so this is her arm, she comes back and forth. And when she was coming back and forth with her hand, she was like, whoa, whoa. And I was like, what's the matter? And she's like, you need to talk to me in the other room. So she took me to the other room, she said, you have something that you don't even know excuse me, um, that you have. And uh, you have something special and you need to do something with that. Yeah. Sorry. And uh, since that day, I can do things that I've never known that I could ever do. And it's, it's, uh, it's a pretty crazy gift. And I, I'm, I appreciate it more than anything in the world. Being that close to people and touching people and feeling what's wrong with them and feeling that when they when they're healing is amazing and it's not it's not a, like a healing thing where I put my hands on someone and then it's healed I can just figure out what's wrong what's not stretched out enough what's not what's joint is out of place and what's wrong um, it just comes natural for some reason I, did, I just don't know why and I'm just I'm just some athlete that played soccer in high school it's been a crazy, crazy, um, amazing uh, job for so many of you all. I can't even call it a job, a life. And it's so hard to give it all up. You know, I feel like I'm um, um, turning my back on people, but I, I, it's taken so much out of my body. Arthritis all over. Um, I have to have my hip replaced, my shoulder replaced, my hands are just completely arthritic. You know, I think because of all this negativity, and I'll be honest with you, 
media, social media, news, all, you know, all that stuff. All you see is the bad all the time. But you ever go to an airport and watch people come in on their arrivals? Do you ever see people fighting or angry or not touch each other? I mean, come on, you see a lot of love, there's hugging, there's kissing, and it's, it's all that, you know? Um, and I, you never see that. But I believe if we could get rid of that bad, that bad and, and start showing some of the good, I believe that we should have, we should do more things to show that it's okay to touch people, it's okay to hug people. If they showed it more and it got more publicity, you know what I mean, of just like the bad stuff does, I think it would be better. I think people would be more comfortable with it. My only thought left is sometimes the most simplest of topics, the things that we know the best, are actually the most complex and hard to really get to the bottom of. Come on, come on, come on, now touch me, babe Can't you see that I am not afraid? What was that promise that you made? Why won't you tell me what she said? What was that promise that you made? Now I'm gonna love you Till the heavens stop the rain Stars fall from the sky for you and I. Come on, come on, come on, come on, now touch me, babe. Can't you see? That I am not afraid What was that